Welcome back, everyone. I'm Nala. And I'm Faith. And this is The Siren's Den, your fandom podcast where we talk all things pop culture under the sun. Today, uh, we have another news in a bottle episode where we're going to be going over just some of the things that are happening that we're interested in um, and that we think just need to be talked about. Definitely. First up, uh, let's talk about some some stuff in the comic book world. Uh, Faith, you've got some cool news in the specifically Harley Quinn fandom. Yeah, so uh, the Harley Quinn animated series uh, is getting a, a comic spinoff called the Eat, Bang, Kill Tour. Um, that was announced last month. However, they just recently released uh, the uh, image, the the cover image of the first comic, as well as just a few preview panels that uh, have been getting a lot of buzz uh, talked about. Uh, one of the things is that, you know, there's all the comic book boys who are like, oh, uh, they can't be gay. Um, and one of the things, the big criticisms that they're getting it is since it's a cartoon style that uh, it's inappropriate for kids, but it was never a kid's show. But uh, they released the, the cover image of it and it is super rad. It is Harley Quinn and I Poison Ivy eating face uh, with everyone else reacting to it. Batman, uh, Gordon, Barbara Gordon, uh, and all having just their various kind of reactions to it. Um, and then in the preview panels we just get some just adorable shippiness of harley quinn and ivy being an adorable couple that they are harley looks super happy which i love uh and that's gonna release uh on august 3rd and it's gonna release worldwide on august 12th Ah, uh, they both deserve this i'm very very happy for them uh, so one of the things, uh, the debates I've been kind of seeing online, too, is that there's a lot of people who are Harley Joker stands who don't like this direction of the character. Um, aye, 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 yeah, I'm not surprised. Here we go. <laughs> I want her to be in an abusive relationship. <laughs> I love that. Because Harley is literally nothing if not just Joker's, like, plaything. She's definitely not, you know, an accomplished woman in her own right. Mm -hmm. Who deserves someone who loves and respects her and does not treat her and make her feel like crap? Yeah. Get at me, Joker Harley stands. Come on. Uh, it's also just been really interesting over the past because I've always loved Harley Quinn. Um, she appeared in Batman, the animated series, and my villain loving heart as a kid was like, ooh, who is she? <laughs> Uh, but it's kind of just been really interesting to see her character evolve from just this kind of diehard Joker's girl who's just this silly and like he doesn't love her, but she doesn't care to actually kind of getting her own character and kind of moving past the Joker and kind of, if anything, kind of becoming a symbol for uh, women leaving their abusive relationships and finding happiness. Uh, and also just becoming her see such a gay icon has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. I know I've, I've absolutely loved seeing the evolution of Harley because I used to like her and Joker just like aesthetically. I was like, all right, cool. You know, they're, they're both, you know, they got that clown theme, of course. Uh, but then I started to realize what kind of a character Joker was. He wasn't just like, and, and the choices he made. And how oh. none of those choices seem to like really benefit Harley. The the Joker we like see like in the eighties and stuff, right? He's just like a maniac. He doesn't even have a girlfriend and all of those, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that he did, like, that's what all of a sudden you see a different side of Joker where you're like, oh, he is a different kind of terrible. Um, and that was that was always like, oof. Then all of a sudden you don't root for them anymore. <laughs> Psychopaths right. work for, root for that. Um, another really cool thing that I'm super pumped about the comic, uh, is the writer, uh, she is a, uh, queer disabled black woman and she is upfront about yes. all of those things. She is the very first, uh, black woman to be helming Harley Quinn. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and she, in her, uh, in interviews with her, she's very open about just all those aspects about like her identity and how that goes into writing. Uh, and I'm really, really excited to see just that perspective uh, come into the comics. I think it's something that's definitely needed. Um, like comics have gotten really good in diversity and especially in 
um, diversity and who's making them. Um, so just, I think it can only make the story better. Absolutely. And again, uh, you can't, you honestly just cannot show me the history of Harley and Poison Ivy and not be like, yes, they are girlfriends. The both, get- yeah. yeah, so much trauma. All they have is each other at a certain point. It goes beyond, like, it's, it's souls needing each other, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, it has kind of cracked me up, uh, people, because I did. I saw in the the DC did a, the tweet that released uh, the cover of it, um, and most of it was just filled with angry nerds. Uh, and a lot of the criticisms I was seeing is like, you can't show this to children. Uh, and I'm like, it's based off of the animated show that was definitely rated M. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's an MA show. Um. So it really just kind of felt like people having a problem with it because it is gay and because it is written by a black woman. So I'm just uh, disappointed. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, this is just us at the Siren's Den. Super hyped to see just kind of the story Uh, there. If I, if I remember correctly, it's gonna, it takes place like not, I don't know how much after they get together, but they are a pre-established relationship in the comics like it's not going to be them falling in this comic it's not going to be them falling in love it's going to be them navigating their relationship so i'm just kind of really excited to see that aspect of it i'm excited to see um just their their journey as a couple um i know that when it comes to a lot of media like the set when the sexual tension kind of ends and like the characters get together that's when people lose interest but I honestly love seeing just relationships develop and just seeing people grow together. I think that's one of the most beautiful aspects of a relationship. Um, So I'm just, I'm excited to see Harley be in a relationship that is loving and supportive and where she's happy. There's one of the, one of the preview pages that they released. It's just, it's Ivy kissing her on the cheek and like the, the way they illustrated Harley's face and just how lit up and happy it is. Like, uh, I, I almost got emotional. Like, I, I love seeing Harley Quinn happy. I love that. I, again, I love that for her. I love that for Poison Ivy. And I'm excited to read it. And I'm excited to talk about it more once it comes out. Uh, that'll be August 3rd. Probably by the time we release this, it will already be out. But um, So as we said before, it is written by the amazing T. Franklin. And it is illustrated by Max Saren, who, if you look up these preview pages, the it's so it's so pretty it's so pretty and cute it's it it looks like it's going to be really just well rounded uh great comic series now i'm to them to bring that into the animated show as well i love batgirl's face <laughs> so funny. i think yeah no batgirl's <laughs> face is definitely uh one of the best parts of this comic cover i absolutely love it um, and I just, up. I, I, I like, uh, I mean, yeah, I, just from the cover, I haven't even seen the preview pages, but like this art is great. Like the emotions these characters are conveying just absolutely jumps off the page. But, yep. uh, speaking on Batgirl, we also have some news over in the, in the DCEU. There has been a casting of the live action, uh, Batgirl. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, in the height star, Leslie Grace has been cast as Barbara Gordon. Uh, and I think uh, she's going to be fantastic. Yes, I absolutely agree. I loved in the heights. I loved her character. You know, I, 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 th- I think she's great and I think she's absolutely going to nail it as Barbara Gordon. I wonder if they're going to give her red hair. I hope so um I, I, that's kind of her signature um and like there's no reason she can't have red hair uh um like it can be it can be dyed it could be a wig it can be any it can be natural it can be not natural i think there's a lot of ways that they can kind of incorporate that look into her that will look amazing absolutely and i i'm also wondering you know what they're going to be doing and, and what time period they're going to be setting this in because it's for the, you know, the HBO, um, you know, I hope by the time they get it and finish it, it will also be released in theaters instead of exclusively on HBO Max, because I still think that's very stupid. Yeah. And, it, you know, she she deserves better. Definitely. Um, and it kind of goes into, I mean, there, there's a whole rabbit hole that we can get into about just uh, media companies kind of like 
we're now seeing a lot of front and center women action stars, but they're kind of not getting the same treatment as like the male action stars movie. I mean, look at the, uh, the Scarlett Johansson lawsuit that's going on right now. Um, mm, uh, you know what? Definitely a, a, a news topic on its own as well. Mm-hmm. I think we talked about when that came out, uh, the, or, or at least when it was announced that it was going to be a Disney plus and theatrical release. I think we've been talking about how it seems like they're only doing that with their women led movies. Like they did it with Cruella. They did it, did it with a uh, Rava. Um, uh, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it's just kind of interesting. Obviously, hopefully they're not going to be uh, HBO max. Isn't going to be giving the same treatment to Leslie Grace as Disney has unfortunately given Scarlett Johansson. You know, honestly, I think with this whole Disney thing, they might be rethinking that because who, who's to say like the, she can sue. Mm-hmm. Anyone can sue at this point. Like they, they, they have to be careful. Like these big, these big conglomerate companies need to start treating people with like the decency that they deserve, which is not breaching their contract. Yeah. Um, and like, it, it's kind of boggled my mind with the Scarlett Johansson lawsuit. How many people are like, oh, rich woman trying to get more money. And I'm like, why are you siding mm-hmm. with a mega corporation who's using a loophole to not pay people? Yeah, um, exactly. it's not about. Yeah, the, I love the the meme where it's from um, Rise of Skywalker. And it's like, I don't want ScarJo to win. I need the mouse to lose. Yeah, that's um, what it is. <laughs> Uh, and also, like, I, I've mentioned that, like, Scarlett Johansson isn't, like, my favorite actress in the world, but I want her mm. to get paid what she's worth. Like, she's been carrying the Marvel on the, the feminine side of things since for, like, almost over a decade. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? They they gave Captain Marvel a movie before they gave Black Widow one. And Captain Marvel got all of this stuff from box office. So, like, it's just like, no, I, I, I definitely I definitely get this double standard. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like also in that lawsuit, uh, it's kind of inspiring other people to join in that lawsuit or do their own lawsuits. There's talks that Emma Stone is going to be making a similar lawsuit and that she was kind of just waiting for someone else to take the lead before, uh, which is understandable. You don't want to be the sole, especially for women in the industry, you don't want to be the woman complaining and like ruin your image, but there's strength in numbers. So mm-hmm. I... I'm really kind of interested to see how these lawsuits kind of shape up. And if they change anything, probably not. Disney will always try and not to pay people. Uh, I can guarantee you that. Uh, But it might kind of change how uh, at least these contracts are made. And um, it also, I'm really interested to see how it's just going to affect payment, like on all levels. Because you got to remember when it comes to actors, it's not just them who's getting paid when they get paid they're uh they have their whole team that usually they only get paid when the actors get paid um there's a whole just payment system there so it's it's going to be really interesting to see how that changes that aspect in the industry mm-hmm. uh we should probably jump back to leslie grace <laughs> yes we should because like yes absolutely we, we did a little mini mini news tangent um <laughs> What are the but other things? Back on Leslie Grace, which I'm I'm very, very excited for her. Uh, one of the things, there is kind of, again, when it comes to any sort of uh, casting with these characters, uh, especially when it comes to casting not white actors, um, there's usually just some backlash from people being like, oh, how, how could they? Barbara is white, um, which I'm always like, they change uh commissioner gordon's race in the movies and i feel the comics all the time mm-hmm. uh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. <laughs> i think didn't they um uh, we're gonna get a michael b jordan was doing yeah. a black superman and then Val they just Zod ca- superman and yeah. and in, in the cw verse they just recast batwoman and oh. i saw her in her costume and i was like fabulous it is it, like they did a really good job on the CW Batwoman costume, right? Mm-hmm. Undeservingly so. Like, why is the CW so good at their co- co- like? That's a great costume. They did really well with her. Uh, but what do you think? Like, so Leslie Grace, I can easily see as being, you know, the daughter of the the commissioner that they're casting in the Batman movie, which is Jeffrey Wright. So, mm-hmm. do you think they're going to continue with that kind of grim? universe that they're now building 
Or, I mean, and I don't know what time period it's set in, but I don't know if it's like, if it has super modern technology, like, is it set in, in present day? Because I would like them to do the new 52 Batgirl storyline. Oh, I, that would be really cool. I, I would love to see new 52. I'm kind of hoping I, I would not be mad at new 52. I would love to see Batgirl year one. Um, just cause that's one mm. of my favorite, uh, Batgirl comics. Uh, it's just her getting her start. Uh, and I'd like, I think that'd be a fun one to see. Um, there's the cool thing about Barbara Gordon and Batgirl is that there's so many fun comic storylines that they can follow, uh, that would just really showcase how awesome Barbara Gordon is. Um, so yeah, well, we'll see. Um, it's the movie, I think the new 52 uh, storyline that they have with her I think that would be just I, I could see that being really cinematic and I can see that just being mm-hmm. um but but yeah but yeah. Batgirl but Batgirl year one because I I know people are sick of origin stories but I love a good origin story and Batgirl year one is a fantastic one um well all right do you think they're going to do a whole uh they're gonna pull a Marvel and just open up a multiverse in DC <laughs> which they already yeah they already have, have they not? Like, yeah, is that not what Flashpoint is? It totally is. You know what? Never mind. I retract my point. So, I mean, good news all around in the uh, in the bad girls yeah. been getting a lot of love as of as of late, which is awesome. Possibilities, they're they're endless. I'm I'm excited. You know, future looks bright in that in that aspect. But um, we'll move on to our our last subject of news. It seems like a lot of this uh, news article focused heavily on good old feminism uh, as we move on to what is happening over with Blizzard and Activision. Yeah, um, it is, this is probably our most serious topic that we're going to be covering. Um, and I imagine this is probably something we're going to be getting back to as updates come out. Um, but uh, probably most of you guys are aware that uh, the state of California is suing Activision Blizzard uh, after a years-long investigation for just how they have treated their workers. It's been described as a frat culture uh, with many women alleging uh, sexual harassment, sexual assault, um, being traumatized by just like the people in power at the the company, at those particular companies. Um, and... Uh, it's kind of just been, it's been telling seeing Blizzard's response to that. Um, uh, Blizzard, for their part, have kind of denied any wrongdoing that they've been doing everything right. Um, a couple people have been like, we've been supportive of women um, who are named of, in the lawsuit. Um, it's it's a lot. The, uh, the ex-Blizzard boss, uh, Mike Morhaim, um, kind of released an open statement that I failed you, the women who were there. I failed you guys while I was there. Um, he wrote specifically, yeah, he still let it happen. Um, and also, one of the things that's kind of with this article that a lot of people are saying is that the this kind of treatment at Blizzard, and also just kind of in the games industry, it's not uncommon it's kind of just been an open secret um and now that it's bringing being brought to light you have a lot of people just scurrying to be like i'm not a part of this uh did you guys see the part of the lawsuit about the freaking cosby suite i was actually gonna like wait for (laughs) for my chance to talk so i can talk about that yes because that has my blood boiling do it i okay so one (laughs) I'm not that big into the gaming industry. I I do wish I had the the time and maybe the hand-eye coordination to be a gamer, but I've always appreciated video games because it's it's a whole new form of storytelling and just the 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 stuff that is capable in games is is extraordinary. And to see that that the people who make these games are such garbage human beings is really, really disheartening and really just does it. I'm not going to say it ruins their games, but I feel like the, the, the games that they make and the statements that they try to make with these games are, are shallow and empty because, you know, you're telling me that these, these, these game creators, they create awesome games with, with these great female characters and yet absolutely disrespect the real life women that they work with. 
And I mean, I'm not even talking about how they treat their employees. This is just solely on how they treat their women employees, which is significantly worse. Like, ooh, and and to have a Cosby, who thought this was a good idea? Who who was genuinely like, yes, let let me, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a group chat. There was, there were, there were pictures. They, they had a giant picture of Bill Cosby. And this is after obviously all the allegations that Cosby had. Like they're, they, they're basically making, they're saying that they don't care. And they in fact like admire what he did. And yeah. it's just, it's such a shame because they are absolutely not, they, they are reinforcing the whole gamer guy stereotype. And uh, this is why they can't have nice things. Yeah, uh, with the Cosby suite. So one of the defenses that like they've made for it, that it was just a nickname or a joke. However, um, there have been images and like comments that have like come out uh, from the people who were in, or just from people who were able to get kind of access from that. Uh, it was reportedly a booze-filled meeting place where uh, many of uh, the upper blizzard staff would pose with portraits of bill cosby and smiling uh and it was just kind of gross and awful and just really kind of showcases what that culture was like uh one of the there's an image that came out um of one of, of the cosby suite uh in an album from 20 2003 uh it was labeled the blizzcon cosby crew um in it a uh, former blizzard designer uh, david kosak wrote on the image I'm gathering the hot chicks for the cause. Um, uh, someone else replied, bring them. You can't marry all of them, Alex. Uh, uh, it's- Which he's like, yes, I can. I'm Middle Eastern. Maybe he, maybe just, ooh, that, that was another thing. That, that, that was another thing. Like, absolutely, as, as a Middle Eastern woman myself, disgusting. I... <laughs> oh again again it just i my brain stops my brain stops at how they can take the the suffering and trauma of so many women it wasn't one or two or three so many women and and to use that as a joke ridiculous uh one of the the former blizzard team um greg street he no longer works for blizzard he works at riot games now um who was one of the people who was involved with the Cosby suite um, has, uh, he tweeted a brief statement in which he cr- uh, claimed it was a green room. Uh, um, Greg Street is also someone who has kind of been named in a lot of these kind of sexual harassment allegations. And it is important to note that he works for Riot Games now. However, Riot Games, it's not being talked about as much. It is also being sued by the state of California for the exact same reasons. Um, hmm. I feel like there's like maybe a pattern here. Yeah, maybe, uh, possibly, uh, uh, but yeah, oh. there, there's so much, there's so much in it. Um, uh, there was a, the, the staff of Blizzard, uh, or they had a walkout on Wednesday, um, just kind mm-hmm. of protesting the treatment. Um, they did a open letter that had 2000, uh, signatures just kind of outcrying that yes this has been a problem we've been saying it's been a problem now it's a lawsuit will you please do something to even acknowledge it um and uh blizzard notably has to deal with this brought in uh i don't know if you guys have heard of uh i think it's called clearwater um or is it they brought in the anti-union or they brought in the union busting firm that uh amazon uses oh, to deal with the oh. situation. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, um, that's just rich, isn't which, it? Which, you know, the employees have gone on record to say that they're not trying to unionize, they're just trying to do something about this particular issue. Um, but hey, now that you mention it, maybe we will unionize if it seems to bother them that much. So, I mean, here's, here's, here's just my, like, one of my final thoughts on this. It seems like these people are a huge liability to the company. And... Mm-hmm. You, you know, with the response that I've been seeing from from everyone and everywhere, it, it's obvious that, you know, we're no longer going to going to sit back and let people be treated this way. So mm-hmm. Blizzard has really no other options because they know that keeping these people on like I'm pretty sure they're fired. Are they not? No, because they should be. 
because they are a huge, massive liability. And if if Blizzard's going to want any chance in actually growing and and being more profitable as a company, they need to do away with them. It can't yeah. like this. These kind of working conditions can't keep going without you know they can't keep getting off scot free. This is no longer. I I feel you know women have a place in every industry and diversity and and inclusion has a place in every industry. And when you don't have that, you get stuff like this and many more people suffer for it. Yeah. Um and I think it's important to note that like Blizzard's response here has been less than ideal. They brought Wilmer Hale is the name of the the firm that they're bringing in. Um but uh, I love firms that are made named after like people, uh, especially like crappy firms like this like why why would you want to imprint your name on this uh but i think kind of i most people uh people a lot of employees at blizzard and i think just from the outside looking in have just been super disappointed in blizzard's response to this kind of the oh we're gonna deal with it oh, we had no idea um and just not really seeing any accountability or like any attempt at accountability being hap- happening. Uh, and I think I think it's safe to say, like, it sucks too because there's a lot of Blizzard properties that I love. Like, uh, I Overwatch, I adore Overwatch. I'm not gonna be buying the second game now. Are you kidding? Mm-hmm. Um, I I can't. Uh, and I think it's also like right. We can safely say that on this podcast, we're not gonna be covering Blizzard Activision properties until like this is dealt with um, properly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, if you're looking for our Overwatch 2 review, uh, tell Blizzard to get their shit together. Definitely. Um, and you know what? We might as well. We, we might as well. So, going to something a little more lighthearted, uh, but a little less based in pop culture, i uh, just going to give a quick shout out to uh, the Olympics that happened this past week. Two weeks, I think? Which... The Olympics is a whole big rabbit hole to be jumping down as well. Um, obviously, oh, definitely. There, I, <laughs> there was the Shikari Richardson situation where she got um, disqualified from the Olympics because she had marijuana in her system. How dare. How dare she. Um, there's obviously the Simone Biles situation uh, where she... I, I think uh, if you... Live, if you didn't haven't heard uh simone biles she's the best gymnast probably ever um she uh ducked out of a lot of her competitions because for mental health reasons uh which i think was a super mature decision to make uh because you know it's not like she has she's like a a pitcher with the yips if she messes up she could die right um, it made me rethink what was it like the mid nineties Olympics with the one that hurt her ankle really bad. And all she had to do was do one more and, mm-hmm. and, and it made me rethink that. Cause back then I thought, Oh, look how brave she was being. And it's like, n- no, like the, the, she clearly was hurting. And I didn't think she wanted to do it. I would love, yeah. I, don't know, she, Harry, I would love Harry to get her. Struck. She her was opinion. encouraged by her. And yeah. I, I'd, I'd love to talk to her about, it, but she was 18 at the time and she never competed again after that. Because she ruined her ankle. Um, and, and, you know, I, I used to be a gymnast. And it is not, it's nothing to joke about. And I really love the opinions of these people who can't even do a cartwheel. Talking about Simone Biles, the goat who has moves named after her now because of how, like, out of this world they are. Honestly, that was, you know, just, just a little tiny thing of the Olympics. I, I would not mind talking about them more once they're over. Yeah. That's, that's you know, yeah, why not? And you know what? It is pop culture. It's, but it's like real life pop culture. Cause honestly, yeah, these, these people, they're, they're doing stuff. That's like, rid- it's crazy. Well, cool. So tune in for that. Cause uh, you know, I have a lot more opinions on the Olympics. But thank you for joining us for our second News in a Bottle installment. Be sure to catch future and previous episodes on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, or wherever it is that you listen to your podcast. Thank you to Ty, our producer, and Sean Thomas at BuzzStudio.com for our theme song. We'll catch you next time. Bye! Bye!